Did you know that there are three species of wild strawberry native to North America? These native fruits have a ton going for them when it comes to why you should include them in your pollinator and wildlife gardens, with a big bonus of, well, strawberries. But beware, there is an imposter out there too. It looks like a strawberry, grows like a strawberry, and has a fruit like a strawberry, but it is in fact an invasive that has little in common with actual strawberries. More about it later. But now let's dive into our native strawberry species, starting off with the most widely distributed wild strawberry in North America, the Virginia strawberry, Frigeria virginiana. This native strawberry can be found throughout Eastern North America, although they become less common in the deep south and peninsular Florida. It is also found in the mountains of the west. The small, five-petaled, white flowers bloom in April and May, depending on location, and are followed in early summer by small, roundish strawberries, which are considered by many to be the most flavorful of the wild strawberries. Strawberries spread vegetatively by runners and can fill in quite a bit of area once established, making them a great choice for a ground cover in spots with full sun to partial shade and well-drained soils. Individual plants aren't large and normally top out around four to nine inches tall with a 24 inch spread, but the reach of their vegetative runners can be much more extensive. Next up is a wild strawberry that has a larger overall range as it can be found in Asia and Europe as well as North America, the woodland strawberry, Frigeria vesca. This species has a limited range in the eastern parts of North America and is primarily found in the upper third of the US and along the mountains of Virginia, North Carolina, Kentucky, and Tennessee. It can be found out west too, but only in the mountains. As its common name suggests, woodland strawberry prefers partial to full shade and normal to somewhat moist soils. If you live in its range, this is a great ground cover for wooded areas as they can quickly fill in as they produce runners. What is a good native ground cover is in the top five questions I get asked about native plants. If you'd like to see more videos about native ground covers, let me know down in the comments. The five-petaled white flowers bloom from April to June, depending on location, and are followed in early summer by red, elongated to conical-shaped fruits. The fruits are tasty, although small. Like the Virginia strawberry, the woodland strawberry is not a large plant and will top out around 10 inches tall with a 24-inch spread, with a much larger reach due to runner production. If you love learning about native ground covers that also produce delicious edible fruit, Think of that like button as a ripe red wild strawberry and pick it. If you have been paying attention, you notice that both wild strawberries covered so far have ranges that overlap and they look very similar. While they may appear to be identical at first glance, there are a couple of easy ways to tell them apart. The first is by looking at the fruit. The Virginia strawberry has small roundish fruits that have seeds which are embedded into the skin. The woodland strawberry has elongated to conical shaped fruits and the seeds are sitting on the skin. They are quite bumpy. If no fruits are present, a quick look at the leaves can be used to differentiate these two species. The thing to look for is the size of the terminal tooth, the last tooth on the tip of the leaf. If the terminal tooth is much smaller than the teeth next to it, you are looking at Virginia strawberry. And if it is similar in size to the teeth next to it, you are looking at woodland strawberry. And now that we know how to identify the two species we have in the Eastern US, I'm gonna do something I rarely do on this channel. Talk about a Western species. I must mention the third species of wild strawberry native to North America, the beach strawberry, Frigeria chiloensis, as it plays a very important part in the world of strawberries. This species, which is found on the Pacific coast from British Columbia to California, and even into Central and South America, all the way to Chile, hence its scientific name, played a pivotal role in the development of what we know as the garden strawberries we all flock to the Yupik farm every summer to harvest. The garden strawberry, Frigeria cross ananasa, was developed in Europe in the 1700s, but has new world roots. It is a cross between the beech strawberry, which is imported to Europe from Chile, but proved difficult to propagate in mass away from its native new world coastal ecoregion and the much easier to propagate Virginia strawberry. The size and the aroma of the beech strawberry fruit paired well with the flavor of the Virginia strawberry, which also added its ease of propagation to the mix. And after many generations of selective breeding produced the strawberries we so love to eat on shortcake with whipped cream. 
If you are a plant nerd and love this kind of plant history, I'm gonna post a much deeper dive into the history of the strawberry on our Backyard Ecology Patreon. It is a crazy story involving indigenous farmers, conquest, espionage, and some plain dumb luck. I will put a link to the Backyard Ecology Patreon in the description for those that wanna help support the channel and learn some cool plant history in the process. The wild strawberries provide more than just tasty berries and good looking ground cover. They are awesome for pollinators and wildlife. The leaves are browsed by a variety of mammals, including deer, rabbits, and woodchucks, and also game birds like the wild turkey and the ruffed grouse. In addition, up to 68 species of caterpillar use wild strawberry as a host plant, including the gray hair streak butterfly and the purple lined sallow moth. Smaller adult butterflies and skippers also visit the flowers, along with a wide assortment of native bees. Of course, the tasty fruits draw a wide variety of critters to feast upon them, including black bears, squirrels, opossums, songbirds like the brown thrasher and the American robin, and even reptiles like the super cool box turtle and the increasingly rare wood turtle. And now we come to an imposter of the wild strawberry, and one many think is the wild strawberry because it is so prevalent in Eastern North America. This plant is the mock strawberry, Potentilla indica, and it is an introduced invasive species that, as its scientific name suggests, is native to India and surrounding areas, but can now be found across the Eastern United States and even into Southern Canada. At first glance, mock strawberry looks a lot like an actual strawberry plant, but there are a few key differences. First, it has bright yellow flowers, so it is an easy ID if it is blooming. Another huge difference is the fruit. Mock strawberry fruits form on the plant pointing upward and are very visible. Wild strawberry fruits hang down from the plant and may take some looking to spot. The nearly round fruits of mock strawberry also have very pronounced seeds and look slightly spiky, almost like the head of a morning star. But a huge difference is the taste and consistency of the fruit. Mock strawberry has a dry, juiceless texture and zero flavor. They don't taste bad, they just don't taste. Mock strawberries are the rice cakes of the fruit world. Instead of mock strawberry, they would have been better named the anti-strawberry since they are the exact opposite of what a strawberry should taste like. I think I've made my point about the gastronomic value of mock strawberries. You may have heard that the mock strawberry is poisonous, so what does it matter if they taste like nothing? Well, they are not toxic. You can eat them, but why would you want to? Critters have the same opinion of them and don't eat the dry, tasteless mock strawberries unless there is no other option. If there are no flowers or berries, the mock strawberry can be a little tough to tell apart from the wild strawberries, but the two can be differentiated by examining the leaves. Mock strawberry tends to have hairy upper and lower leaf surfaces, while the wild strawberries tend to have smooth upper leaf surfaces and hairy lower leaf surfaces. This plant is considered invasive in many of the areas it has been introduced into and can form dense, ground-covering mats that inhibit native plant growth. It has no wildlife value and should be controlled when found to allow more beneficial native plants to grow. Speaking of beneficial native plants, there's another super easy to grow native ground cover that doesn't get near the respect it deserves, the native violets. These easy to grow natives are pollinator powerhouses and vital to a large group of butterflies as a host plant and some pollen specialist native bees. You can learn all about the native violets in this video and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.